Hello, Peter Gertz here. I'm a psychiatrist. Some psychiatrists absolutely are against psychiatric medicines. And I don't want to be mean, but I have to ask, what planet are you on? Uh, what setting do you work in? Um, if those psychiatrists are totally against psychiatric medicines. So in other words, I think it really is time for a balanced view and analogously, um, let's say some people are totally against psychiatric hospitalization, but what is the alternative? You know, if someone's violent, suicidal, etc. So I think with uh, these things, it is time for a balanced view. And apropos balance, um, some psychiatrists make fun of the term chemical imbalance saying there's no proof for this. Um, however, it is clear that our body is full of biochemical substances and it is also clear that the psychological aspect influences the physical aspect. So just from that alone, you can realize that psychological feelings, emotional feelings have biochemical correlates. And if you add a biochemical substance um, like amphetamine, you're going to have a psychological, emotional correlate. You're going to feel different. Um, so again, if a psychiatrist totally rejects psychiatric medicine, I have to ask, what setting are you working in? Um, if a psychiatrist works in a psychiatric emergency room, I don't see an alternative. You're going to have people out of control on PCP, angel dust, um, various substances, psychotic from synthetic marijuana, um, in a manic episode, severely depressed, severely anxious. And if anyone has the ability to help these patients immediately, um, without psychotropic medications, I would respect that, but I've not seen it. So again, um, from what I understand, the psychiatrists who reject psychiatric medicines do not work in emergency room settings with acute psychiatric patients. Um, they may not even work with patients who use drugs or alcohol, which is many, many, many patients. They may dictate that patients stick to a certain diet. So there's an issue of freedom here. If you're a psychiatrist who accepts treating various patients, including people who use drugs, alcohol, who do not attend to their diet in a healthy way. If you're open to treating many different patients, you need to, in my opinion, be open to using psychotropic psychiatric medications. So uh, again, in my opinion, um, we have to give patients freedom. We cannot dictate to them if they're willing, fine. If they're willing to go into psychotherapy and um, deal with their, the roots of their emotional issues, wonderful. A lot of patients are not willing. A lot of patients are not financially able to. So again, we want to respect that, just like we cannot force a patient to stop smoking. You know, if a psychiatrist or a doctor rejects a patient because they're smoking or using drugs, that, um, you know, that's up to the psychiatrist or the doctor, but of course then you reject a huge portion of the population. So if you want to be open to treating various patients, um, that I think uh, creates a need for psychiatric medications, at times at least. I'm not advocating uh, overuse whatsoever, because um, in general, the psychiatric medications do not get to the roots of issues, of course not, not to the emotional roots. But some people do not want to deal with the emotional roots. Let's say if someone's been traumatized sexually in childhood, they may never be ready in their life to address those issues, and they may, ne may never want to. So again, we want to respect our patients. Um, and uh, there are other patients that I haven't mentioned um, that if a psychiatrist totally rejects psychiatric medication, how would they treat delirious patients, medically delirious patients from medical illness who are so confused, uh, they don't know where they are, what day it is, they can be violent, um, analogous issue, demented patients, intellectually disabled patients. 
Um, very agitated, violent patients. I think I mentioned that. So there are various issues to consider. And also, we want to respect our patients' opinions. Um, many patients very much appreciate psychiatric medications. Um, so in my opinion, we need to respect that. And if they don't want to stop using drugs or don't want to stop drinking alcohol, don't want to stop overeating, in my opinion, we need to give them that freedom. We cannot control other people, at least not long term. There's a lot of um, complaining about the um, pharma industry, quote, big pharma. Um, just the fact that big pharma makes money and uh, a lot of research is paid for by um, drug companies does not necessarily mean that medications are that the psychotropic medications are inherently ineffective. So I think there's a logical error there also. Even if, um, you know, just theoretically, even if a group of people who are criminals were producing psychotropic medications, that does not necessarily mean that they're inherently ineffective. So again, I think we need to keep an open mind. Um, and, uh, of course, medications themselves, this is another issue I didn't mention so far, like steroids can induce psychiatric problems, um, so those type of patients may, may well need psychotropic medications also. Um, another thing related to research is um, people uh, quote research studies on both sides, I mean anti-medication, pro-medication, but from an individual patient's point of view, statistics are not necessarily relevant. Each individual person is so different that you cannot, definitely cannot predict with certainty um, what is going to happen with an individual patient. So even if a medication is only 20% effective, is only, based on statistics, effective for 20% of people, your one patient may have an have a wonderful response to the medication. Um, all right, thank you.